more fun games than movies. This is Trailer Told, a YouTube channel in the world. Thank you for clicking. Subscriptions are a huge boost. Helltide density, Helltide bosses, new mechanics, quests, events, even Andario's making a comeback and bringing tormented boss changes, and more all in this video. In the studio today, we have Derek Nunez, who's a lead seasons designer. Hey, Derek. Hey, happy to be here. Always happy to have you in here. Derek is answering some questions I've picked out from our social channel, so if you'd like to be in the next video, keep an eye out for those posts. For Helltides, we took a hard look at player feedback and general learnings from other popular events players seem to enjoy, like the Blood Harvest from Season 2, for example. So what's different? Well, when you step into a Helltide, you'll notice a new threat meter on the right side of your screen. This fills up as you slay demons and engage with the content. There are three threat levels. Each level increases the rewards and difficulty of the monsters. Throwing ambushes at you, elites start spawning, and you get bigger pack sizes. Once the meter completely fills up, you become Hellmarked. Being Hellmarked triggers the final ambush, which means an all-out demon frenzy wave of monsters is thrown at you, and it all culminates to a final fight with the Hellborn. The Hellborn are very challenging and are actually resurrected heroes of Sanctuary. Wait, is this where you go if your deeds are not remembered? Anyway, once the frenzy wave is over, or if you, you know, die, the threat resets. Another addition is the ability to collect a new material called Baneful Hearts. They drop primarily from tortured gifts around Helltides, basically the Helltide chests, and sometimes you might see them from various demons around the zone, such as the Doomsayers and the Hellborn. These Baneful Hearts are important because you can summon a zone-wide boss for everyone called the Blood Maiden. To find this fiend, head to the demon head icon on your map. It takes three hearts to summon this big bad, or zero if you're leeching from your friends. Reverse card though, since contributors who summon the Blood Maiden receive bonus rewards. Either way, everybody's winning. There are lots of other great changes too, including a new randomized pop-up Doomsayer, Iron Wolf, and demonic events to discover. We've also included Helltide-specific Whisper bounties, and Whispers in general have been buffed across the board. But wait, there's more. We're adding Helltides to World Tiers 1 and 2. But there are a few differences. For instance, you're not farming endgame materials like Living Steel or Forgotten Souls, but we found having Helltides tuned to that early game 1 to 50 process to be really fun. Okay, let's talk about some tormented bosses. Joining the ladder is the Maiden of Anguish and Dariel. She shares the same loot table as Duriel, so you can farm some of the best items in the game from two sources. This encounter is also being updated, so it should feel different than before. You can expect various elements to be thrown at you during the fight, even her iconic Poison Nova attack. And he's located east of Tasseract in Hangman's Hall. You will need the summoning parts from Lord Zir and the Beast in Ice. Also, you're now able to summon a level 200 version of every tormented boss. So Lord Zir, Duriel, Andy, all of them. We're calling them Tormented Echoes. If you power it up to an Echo, you will receive five times the rewards versus normal tormented bosses, but it only costs three times the materials and a new summoning item called Stygian Stones. They can be summoned from the same altars as the normal bosses, so just click over to the tormented version. Stygian Stones are found deep within the pit. We mentioned the pit in our last video, feel free to check it out, but you'll get a priority quest to unlock it after completing a Nightmare Dungeon 45. You can run them solo or in a group. In addition, the first time you kill any of these tormented echo bosses, you will receive a resplendent spark for your troubles, which is gonna go a long way in crafting those uniques. Crazy big shout out to the team for all these awesome changes, but now we have some questions picked straight from social media for Derek. Derek, I appreciate you sitting through all that. Oh, absolutely. Ruan wants to know if limited time events will return in the future like Midwinter Blight. Yeah, you know, I, I, I love the sense of experimentation we got to do with the Midwinter Blight and the fall of the Lunar Awakening. And while I don't have details to share right now about you know the future of Luna Time events. What I can say is that the spirit of them and the pursuits of novelty and novel mechanics that they went for uh, is definitely part of the inspirations that went into the upgraded Hell Tides. Go check out the Tides for now. Yeah, I loved leveling actually in the other events, so now I get to level in Hell Tides, so I think it's a win. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like one of the examples of that was the Lunar Awakening introduced the Lunar Awakening Whisper Bounties. So that was, again, like another type of uh, element that we pulled into the Hell Tides where we now have the Hell Tide Bounties. Yeah, I think they're noted by the little fire symbol on the Whisper. Yeah, they're, they're hard to miss. I have a question from Ted. 
he wants to know, will Hell Tides appear before the campaign is completed? Yeah, so the Hell Tides are still unlocked by completing the campaign or by creating a campaign skipped character. Uh, part of the updates with the season four, uh, I guess like Hell Tide expansions is that they are now appear in World Tiers one and two. If you create a campaign skipped character, you'll have access to the tides all the way from level one to 100. Marco would like an alert when somebody activates an accursed ritual, basically summoning the Blood Maiden. There actually is an alert that pops up. So when someone deposits all the Baneful Hearts required to kick off the accursed ritual event, we actually do broadcast a, a banner notification across the middle of the screen. So definitely keep an eye out for that. In addition, if you happen to be looking at the map at that time, the Accursed Ritual map icon actually flips from its, I think its default color of white to orange and then starts pulsing. So, you know, when the Hell Tides hit uh, live with season four, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on the, uh, you know, the feedback and just make sure players are noticing what we want them to notice. Because it's always a great time when people get to play together and the inherent spirit of the Accursed Ritual is meant to celebrate that, so. Yeah, something we'll definitely keep an eye on. Erk wants to know, will Helltides be threatening now? That was actually one of the uh, team favorite uh, observations that we had from players on the PTR that we were actually getting some great reports that the Helltides actually did feel much more threatening than they did in any season prior. So yes, to answer it shortly, yes, the uh, Helltides are absolutely more threatening in season four. Um, and uh, it kind of it stands for a reason, like the Hell Tides are the most efficient leveling content that we have. So it kind of makes sense that the whole concept of, you know, Hell on Sanctuary, demonic invasions should be threatening. Yeah, the density really ramps up and yeah, I'm all about that. Question from Condis: they would love a feature in Hell Tides that auto pick up the cinders to limit backtracking. Yeah, I mean, with that, I'm really happy to say that for the season four PTR, we actually did increase the aberrant cinder pickup radius and players did catch on to that and just the team in general was just really happy to get that in so it was in the ptr it'll absolutely still be there for season four proper and you know this kind of all ties in line with the one of the pillars of the hell tide upgrades was just to find opportunities to maximize efficiency and increasing the cinder pickup radius was certainly one of the tactics that we did to, to achieve that. Um, you know, no one likes to backtrack and go pick up cinders and break your flow. On the topic of maximizing efficiency, one thing that was not in the PTR, but is in the season four uh, launch is we've actually decreased the amount of time it takes to interact with and open up the tortured gifts. Uh, so again, you know, we're through all, you know, thanks to the threat system and just the increased density in the Hell Tides. Uh, we really just wanted to you know, minimize friction and keep the players moving. I can't tell you how many times I'm trying to open up a chest and then I get interrupted. And like you said, with the increased density, it can make that even more problematic. So that's a great change. I like that one. I have a question from username, why do I bother? Uh, they would like more chance encounters in Hell Tides, like a butcher style mechanic. Yeah, you know, when we were looking at the Hell Tide upgrades, those types of chance encounters, random encounters, or just like opportunities to add like dashes of novelty or, or surprise was definitely something that we were taking a look at. And it's definitely in the spirit of the Doomsayer events. Uh, I kind of like to describe them as like these Kinder Egg surprises where when you interact with them, they you know crack up and explode into a variety of different things. One of which my favorite being is the Treasure Goblin variant. Um, but yeah, you know, we're always looking for uh, just ways to splice up the moment to moment core loop. So um, I wouldn't write anything off uh, just yet. JR has a request. He would not like a five minute cooldown between hell tides. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, that's a good one. Like, we actually did decrease the downtime between the hell tides, as you know, we all recall, down to the five minutes it is right now. But you know, we don't necessarily have any updates to share on decreasing that any further at this moment. But we're always looking again for opportunities to streamline and, and maximize the, or I guess, decrease downtimes and across the board. For what I can say right now is, you know, maybe even sometimes the demons of hell need a little bit of a break. Well, thanks Derek for taking the time to answer some of these questions 
And honestly, most of these changes have been sparked from our community. So keep the feedback coming. That's gonna be all for today. We'll see you in Sanctuary. See ya.